Well, a new study shows more than a billion people around the world could have diabetes by the year 2050. In 2021, there were 529 million people with diabetes worldwide. And the new study in The Lancet shows that that number could double in the next 27 years. And joining me now is Dr. Maalthi Sirnivasan, clinical professor of medicine at Stanford. So thank you very much for joining us. What are the main factors behind this projected spike? Ryan, diabetes is the defining chronic disease health crisis of our time, and it's really due to both personal and systemic issues. And personally, our sedentary lifestyles and overeating are overloading our metabolism. Now, we know sitting is a new smoking with just as many health risks from sitting as smoking, a couple packs a day. And there's so much nutrition information that people are adopting non-sustainable fad diets. And because these changes happen in clusters, family and friend groups adopt each other's health habits. But even more importantly is that systematically, geographic inequalities and historic structural racism have led to poor access for care for marginalized communities. So what we've done is we've created a problem that's gonna cost almost a trillion dollars a year to treat worldwide. And it's such a shame because type two diabetes is really largely preventable. And, and what are the, the, the typical symptoms of, of diabetes? Ryan, here's the problem. Type 2 diabetes, uh, which is where you have high uh, diabetes with high blood sugar due to insulin resistance, is a silent killer. It's a leading cause of kidney failure, blindness, heart disease, and amputations. And people don't get symptoms until their body is irreversibly damaged. Now, that's in contrast with the 5% of people who have type 1 diabetes, which is from pancreatic failure and uh, low insulin who need insulin. And they'll get symptoms of being very thirsty, hungry, and they'll urinate a lot. So it's really important to get screened for diabetes, especially if you're obese or overweight and over 35, uh, or if you're over 45, or if you have a strong family history. So for instance, some Native American groups and some Asian groups tend to de develop diabetes earlier and uh, probably should get screened a little bit earlier. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the different groups, but is there any specific group that, that is more at risk than others? Yeah, Filipinos, um, uh, Pima Indians, um, some of the Hispanic subgroups and uh, South Asians are particularly at risk uh, in comparison with others. And then it really depends on your socio demographics. So people who traditionally have had poor access to health care or are in low income areas uh, tend to be in food deserts. They may not have as, as much access to safe places to exercise or to walk. And um, uh, it's really a structural problem that our society has set up that we need to tackle as a society. You talked about the, the dangers of sitting for too long. I'm stuck in the office now a lot. Uh, what are some of the steps we can do to reduce our risk of getting diabetes? Right, so, you know, type two diabetes is really largely reversible and it's very preventable if you don't have end organ disease. So in addition to getting screened for diabetes individually, we really need to improve the way we live. And so this is things like focusing on diets, um, you know, plant-based whole food diets with lower glycemic index carbohydrates, so you're, you don't have a big blood sugar spike after you eat, starting to walk or exercise on a regular basis, and the standard things of stopping smoking and limiting alcohol, and really maintaining a healthy weight. But the larger issue is educating the public about diabetes risks and improving our public health infrastructure, especially for uh, low income and marginalized communities. And that includes things like starting education early uh, to reduce nutrition misinformation uh, with everything from a school, national school lunch nutrition programs um, and things that will focus on evidence and physiology and not food fats. All right, well, always good information, and thank you very much for joining us and sharing your knowledge, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much. It's great to see you, Ryan. Thank you.